I want your soul. I knew it was a mistake to let Joel lead us. I just didn't know how horrible a mistake it was and how steep the cost would be. We're lost, aren't we? I said to Joel, who was turning the map upside down and then back again. No, of course not, he said, flipping the map once more. I know exactly where we are. The fact that he was dating my best friend was the only thing that kept me from ripping that map right out of his hands. I walked away in disgust before I said or did something I would regret. I went and found Marie sitting by the fire talking to Trey. Will you please go tell your boyfriend that we're lost? We're not lost. We just don't know exactly where we are, Marie said with a playful smile. It's not funny, I said through gritted teeth. Oh, sure it is, Trey said. Sit down here by the fire and just chill out, man. The six of us haven't taken a trip together in how long? Just relax, enjoy it. It's not that big of a deal. It is a big deal, I said. We're lost. So what? We just got camp set up. This is the first day of our trip. We have three more to go. Look, we'll find out where we are tomorrow, Marie said. I promise. I looked at her with eyes full of doubt. Yeah, you should enjoy yourself. Look around at all this beautiful nature. Kind of makes you feel insignificant, doesn't it? Trey quirked. I looked around at the trees that surrounded us on all sides. The only good thing about where we had camped out was it was at the top of a small hill, so there was plenty to see, even if it was mostly treetops. Yeah... You know, nature can be dangerous, I said, sitting down and grabbing a stick. And Marie shook her head. That's my best friend, little Miss Sunshine. I impaled the marshmallow with the end of my stick and dangled it over the flames, watching it intently as it got scorched, turning it dark brown. I'm going to need a graham cracker and a candy bar. I looked over at the two of them and Marie grinned at me. Now that's more like it, Trey said, handing me the items. I carefully pulled the marshmallow off the stick in between the crackers and the chocolate, setting the stick aside as I relished in devouring my treat. Jeannie appeared in the firelight as we burst into laughter. Did I miss something, she said. Ah, you had to be there, Trey replied. I was here. I've been here the whole time. I was right over here, setting up my tent while the rest of you just lay around and wait for nightfall, and then asked me to come help you. She sat in a huff. I took a marshmallow on a stick and handed it to her. She took it and hovered it over the fire. Be careful, I said. Don't let that stick go back up your ass. Marie and Trey then lost it and howled with laughter. Jeannie turned red and threw the stick into the fire, marshmallow and all, and then stormed off. Well, I guess it was another stick, I said, and they roared with laughter again. What's so funny? Soren asked, sitting down on the log, eyeing the stick in the fire. Trey looked at us and said, Ah, you had to be there. Marie, Trey, and I exploded with laughter while Soren just stared at us, mystified. Okay. He then grabbed another stick and started roasting a marshmallow of his own. Hey, keep it down, Joel said, coming over and sitting next to us. Why? Are we going to wake the wildlife? We don't want to attract too much attention to ourselves. Oh, will the owls call the cops on us for disturbing the peace? Trey replied, causing a round of snickers. Dude, I just don't want to draw the attention of anything bigger, okay? Listening to this back and forth, I couldn't let it go either. I had to open my mouth. Like what, Joel? I said, practically daring him to answer me. I don't know, man. Like bigger, he said, keeping his eyes focused on the fire instead of mine. Like what, dude? A deer? A bear? He then shrugged. Or a skinwalker? Everyone around the fire showed some form of exasperation. Soren then shook his head. Trey rolled his eyes, and Marie put her face in her palm, and I just stared at Please tell me that you don't actually believe in that bullshit. Still looking down, he shrugged his shoulders. You know, I kind of do. I was just about to tell him how asinine he was when, from the fading light of the forest, came the piercing sound of a woman's shriek. We each looked at each other as if to confirm that we all heard it. Was that Jeannie? Instantly, we were all on our feet. We dashed over to Jeannie's tent, but she wasn't there. Trey produced a flashlight and shone it around at the trees. Where did it come from? He said. 
I got my flashlight from my own pack and shone it around the same area as he did. I don't know, but it seemed like it was in that direction over there. No, no, it was over here, Joel said, pointing his light in the opposite direction. I bit my tongue to keep the comment about his lack of direction to myself. Why don't you two go that way and Trey and I go this way? I was pointing at Joel and Marie now. Well, what should I do? Soren asked. Stay at the campsite in case she comes back and needs help. What if I need help? He asked, looking around at the trees as though they'd all become monsters. I shrugged. Well, I guess you should just start screaming then like a fucking pussy. I then started walking and disappeared into the forest with Trey. There was still a sliver of light in the sky, but dusk was losing its fight against the oncoming darkness. We wove our way slowly through the trees. It seemed like it became darker the further we went, as if the trees themselves were sucking the light out of the air. Our flashlights fought a valiant battle against the dark, but they were merely pinpricks of light against the oppressive darkness. Genie, I called out, hearing my own voice echo back. I suddenly became aware of how much noise we were making, stomping through the woods, looking for our friend. Trey kept moving, silent and steady. He didn't seem to be making as much noise as me, despite being nearly twice my size. Genie, I called out again, with no response. Hold on, Trey said, holding out his arm, forcing me to stop. Do you hear that? I listened, and at first I didn't hear anything, not even the animals that usually make noise at night. It was a little weird, and I didn't like it. Nah, nah, I don't hear anything. Listen, he said, holding up a finger to his mouth. I fought down the anger of telling him again that I didn't hear anything when suddenly I did. It was faint, but I could hear it. A river? He nodded. Do you think she would have gone down there? I don't know, but I think we owe it to her to go check. And then he started off towards the sound of the running water. We had been heading downhill the entire time. Before it was a gentle slope, and now it had gotten steeper. We had to hold on to trees to keep from sliding all the way down to the river, bouncing off trees as we went. And this was definitely one activity that I didn't want to check off for this camping trip. Searching for a missing friend wasn't on my list either. We made it down to the river and found it was fast running. We made sure to keep away from the water so we wouldn't get swept away by the current. If she fell in here, she'd certainly be dead by now, I said. But Trey didn't seem to hear me. He was frozen in place, eyes wide, staring across the river. What's wrong? I followed his eyes when I caught sight of exactly what was wrong. On the other side of the river was something. It was hard to see, but it was some kind of animal. It was covered with light gray fur that seemed almost silver. It was big, at least as big as a bear, but leaner. It stood on its hind legs and had hands at the end of its arms. The claws and fangs were the real eye magnet. They looked like they were ready to tear us apart. It glared at us with the intensity of a hungry predator. You're seeing this, aren't you? Trey whispered. You mean that thing that looks like it wants to make us a late night snack? Yeah, that's it. Do you think Jeannie saw it too? I don't know, but I think we should go back to the camp. Yeah, we probably should. We both started backing slowly away from the river and started up the hill, trying to keep our eyes on the creature the whole time. But then, I slipped and fell, nearly sliding back down the hill to the water, and I decided I should pay attention to climbing going forward. It was a lot harder than I thought climbing back up that hill. By the time we made it to the easier part, I was soaked in sweat and breathing hard. I looked over at Trey and found him breathing normally. You make me sick, I said through gasps of breath. He smiled. They make these things called gyms, you know. You should try it sometime. I gave him the fingers I doubled over trying to catch my breath, and he chuckled. Maybe you can use your muscles to fight off that thing we saw if it follows us up this hill then, smart guy. He glanced back down the hill toward the river. Do you think it did? Well, how the fuck should I know, Trey? Do you think we should tell the others? Are you kidding me? In fuel Joel's imagination? You see what he said at the campfire, right? He already believes in this shit. Don't you think he would go into full-on panic mode? That's the last thing we need. We're fucking lost out here. And then he would go all urban legend on us. I'm not trying to deal with that shit. Yeah, you're probably right. He would want us to pack up and leave. Which might not be a bad idea, by the way. Right? I mean, after what we just saw, I'm ready to get the fuck out of here. But I don't think we should leave without Jeannie. 
Yeah, that's true. I agree. We hiked up the rest of the hill in silence. At one point, we seemed to lose our way, but turning off our flashlights revealed the glow of the fire in the distance to the right. We followed it and came across the camp, but it was empty. We looked in the tents for Soren, but he was nowhere around. Just as we finished searching, Joel burst through the trees and into the firelight, breathing hard. What happened to you? Trey said. Where's Marie? I don't know. We got separated and I tried to find her, but got turned around and I ended up back here. I stepped over and grabbed his shirt, pulling him to me even though he was a good six inches taller. You lost her? I said, barely keeping my cool. Well, not lost, okay. She's just misplaced. I don't know. I'll misplace you, I said, drawing back my fist like I was going to punch him. He recoiled and held his arm up to block the blow. Just as I was about to swing, Marie stepped into the firelight. What's going on? She said, eyes wide at me, about to beat the crap out of her boyfriend. I let him go and turned to her. Well, he said he lost you. I actually said misplaced. Okay. He then cringed back, withering under my glare. And yet here I am. I'm not lost at all. Did you find Jeannie? I shook my head. Yeah, we didn't either. What do we do now? Well, I think it's obvious that we're not going to find her in the dark. We should start looking in the morning. Well, what about Soren? Trey said. Well, what about Soren? He's missing. Yeah, we came back and he was gone. Well, I mean, shouldn't we go look for him? I then turned to Joel and he took a half step back. I just said that we shouldn't go searching for him in the dark. Yeah, but that was for Jeannie, though. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Is it any less dark now, you guys? No, Joel said, looking around. Then we shouldn't be looking for Soren either. I mean, is everyone standing around this campfire wearing fucking earmuffs? Did anyone hear what I just said? He opened his mouth as if to protest, then thought better and closed it. I suggest one of us stays up for a couple hours while the others get some rest. Why? Joel asked. Because. I was floundering now, not wanting to tell them about the creature because Joel would go into a full-on panic. Well, we should keep the fire going so they can find the way back. It's our only source of light right now. Joel looked at me like a dog that had heard a strange sound. No, I agree, Marie said. I'll stay up for a while and tend to the fire. Joel then looked at her with a pleading look. And then I'll come to bed, she said. I'll relieve you in a couple hours. Just come wake me up after that. We all looked at Joel, but he had turned and stormed off into his tent in the huff. And I grinned at Marie. Was someone looking forward to getting a little something this evening? Her cheeks flushed. I don't know what you're talking about, she said, throwing her nose in the air. Now be gone from my sight and sleep the sleep of the dead, she said. I didn't dare react beyond a smile. I didn't want her to panic either. I shot a fake smile at her and turned to my tent, hoping that that thing had stayed on its side of the river. I awoke to a dark tent, and panic flooded me as I saw a large silhouette reaching out. I grabbed my flashlight and swung it at the creature, not knowing what I would do next. Ow, it said. What the hell did you do that for? I turned the light on to find Trey holding his wrist. Sorry, man, you scared me. I knew that was a weak excuse, but I mean, it was the truth. It's your turn to watch, he said, turning and leaving my tent. I sighed. I would have to apologize again when he woke up. I hadn't changed out of my clothes, but decided I should take a sweatshirt with me to fend off the cool forest air. I stepped out and knew I'd made the right decision. There was a chill on the breeze that made me hug myself as I stepped over and added another log to the fire. I watched the flames dance, allowing myself to be mesmerized and hoping I could stay awake until sunrise. As I sat in silence, I heard muffled conversation coming from Joel and Marie's tent. A few minutes later, it was replaced by soft moans. I smiled. Joel was finally getting what he wanted. As the intensity of the sounds increased, I found myself the slightest bit jealous, and that might be a nice way to relax on a camping trip. As I pondered these things, I heard rustling in the trees. My senses went on full red alert as I grabbed my flashlight and shone it where I thought the sound came from. The wind had died down to nearly nothing, but there were branches moving where I heard the sound. My light was having a hard time staying on one area, and I was shaking badly. What would I do? How would I protect my friends from this huge creature? I didn't know if anyone had brought a gun or not, but all I had was a small pocket knife. 
Unfortunately, it was in my tent, and I was currently frozen in fear, rooted to my spot. I watched helplessly as this thing came closer. I could see the branches and the closest trees moving now, and it was almost here. I held my breath, listening for any growling, but only hearing the moans coming from the tent behind me. I finally forced myself to stand. If I was going to warn anyone or run away from this thing, I'd have to be on my feet. The light was shaking badly as the creature stepped out into the open, and I sucked in a breath of air in shock. Jeannie. She stumbled as I ran to her and caught her before she fell. Are you all right? I said as a reflex before I had a chance to even look her over. I realized what a stupid question I'd asked. Her clothes were ripped in several places, and there were patches of red soaked into them. What happened to you? She crumbled into my arms, and I helped her back to the tent. She seemed exhausted, allowing me to support her weight as much as possible. She mumbled through ragged breaths, but I couldn't make out what she was saying. When I got her to her tent later down on her sleeping bag, she sighed deeply. Her eyes were closed before I left. As I stepped out, I heard her mutter a single word. Soren. A chill ran down my spine. Did she mean Soren had done this? Or was Soren in trouble too? I stepped back out into the cool air with a mixture of relief, puzzlement, and fear. Jeannie had returned, but Soren was still gone. What had Jeannie gone through? Was she attacked by the creature we saw? How did she get away from it? Did she see Soren? She wouldn't have known he was gone unless she'd seen him. What was his deal anyway to just up and vanish like that? I would have a lot of questions for Jeannie when she awoke. I did a quick look around before sitting back down on the log. The nightly voices had resumed, but the tent behind me was silent. They must have finished their little rendezvous. I had a funny but terrifying thought. Who usually gets killed first in horror movies? The ones who have sex. That's who. I hoped for all our sakes that this trip didn't end up like a horror movie, to say the least. The rest of my watch went smoothly, unless you count me sitting bolt upright and nearly pissing myself every time I heard a rustle of a noise in the woods. When Marie came out of her tent in the morning, looking all refreshed and glowing, I wanted to slap the shit out of her. How was your sleep? I asked, not really wanting to know the answer. Was it peaceful? She sighed with contentment, completely missing my verbal jab. Absolutely. I snorted with disgust as I yawned and stretched. Okay, I'm going to go back to bed then, I said. Oh, and by the way, Jeannie came back last night. What? What happened to her? Is she okay? Why did she roam off? Well, I don't know. You don't know? Yeah, she collapsed in my arms and I had to carry her to the tent, I said, with a little more edge than I wanted. It wasn't time for 20 questions. She was exhausted. She took a half step back. Just wake me when she feels like talking, I said. Until then, I'm going to go to sleep. I stepped past her, opened my tent, and collapsed onto my sleeping bag. I'd barely closed my eyes until someone was shaking me awake. Leave me the fuck alone. I just laid down, I said, swatting them away like a fly. That was four hours ago, Trey said. Jeannie's awake and she wants to talk to us. I reluctantly rolled over and looked at him. It's seriously been four hours, dude? And he nodded. Fine. I started struggling to my feet and stretching. We walked out to find the sun high in the sky and Jeannie sitting on the log, drinking some coffee. Joel and Marie were seated beside her. I sat on the other side next to the smoldering fire, and Trey stood as she lowered her cup to speak. I was angry with the three of you, she said, looking at me, Trey, and Marie, so I decided to go for a walk in the woods to cool off. I didn't really care which direction I went, I just walked. Once I had cooled down and turned to come back, I must have gotten off track and couldn't find the camp. I wandered around for hours in the dark, desperately trying to find my way. I was thrilled when I bumped into Soren, but there was something wrong with him. He grinned at me in a way I'd never seen him do, and then she started sobbing now. Marie reached over and laid her hand on her shoulder. Did he fall or get hurt? No, Jeannie said. He transformed. What? What do you mean he transformed? It was hard to see very well because it was dark, but he grew bigger, taller, and hairy. His arms and legs became longer, and he grew claws. I glanced at Trey, who was standing still as stone, taking everything in. I clamped my mouth shut as Jeannie continued her story. I didn't know what else to do but run, 
but no matter where I ran, he caught up with me. And every time he caught me, he would slash at me. She pulled up her shirt enough to show slash marks on her belly, then her back and her arms. I knew it was only a matter of time before he got me, so I tried to hide. I found an old tree that had fallen and dug into the dirt around its roots. I made a big enough hole to hide in and covered myself with leaves. He stalked back and forth in front of me a few times as I focused on being as still as possible. After a while, I heard my name being called, but I didn't dare respond. I looked at Trey who still hadn't moved. I fell asleep somehow, probably the adrenaline crash. When I awoke, it was nearly light. I took my chance to find my way back to camp. Thank God I did before he got back. Wow, Joel said. Who would have thought Soren was a monster? His face a mask of impassiveness. Well, what do we do? Marie asked, and all eyes fell on her. I mean, obviously he's going to come back at some point. Maybe he'll change back and try to pretend nothing happened. That's what I was thinking, Jeannie replied. He'll try to catch us off guard. But why pretend if he's this powerful monster, I said. Animal instinct, Joel chimed in with a far-off look. Even the strongest predator doesn't dive right into the middle of the herd. They wait to pick off the weak and the stragglers. I stared at him for a long moment. It was the smartest thing I think I'd ever heard him say. Did anybody bring a gun? We all looked from one to the other. Slowly, Marie raised her hand, and we all stared at her in shock. What? We're in the woods. You never know what you might run across. Hell yeah, I brought a gun. Right, including a homicidal friend turned monster, Jeannie said, her eyes focused in the distance as if her thoughts were miles away now. May we borrow your gun, Marie? Trey asked. I think from this moment on, we need to have somebody keep in watch at all times, and that someone should be armed. Marie hesitated, then went to her tent and returned a minute later holding a snub nose thirty eight. She handed it to Trey, who opened the cylinder to make sure it was loaded, and then closed it. Who wants to take the first watch while everybody packs up? Packs up, Joel said. Do you want to wait until this thing hunts us down one by one and kill us all? Joel looked around from eye to eye. No, of course I don't want to. Then we need to get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah, but there's just one problem, I chimed in, glaring at Joel. We don't know where we are. Trey shot a look at Joel, who immediately stared at the ground. We'll deal with that when we have to. In the meantime, pack your shit up. Everyone hurried about the camp packing and gathering their belongings. Trey stood silent the entire time watching. When I was done, he gave me the gun while he packed up. Before long, we were all ready to go. The only holdout was Soren's tent that stood undisturbed. Do you think we should take his stuff home? Why? Jeannie replied. He doesn't need it anymore. Joel stared at her for a long moment, then shouldered his back and helped Marie put hers on. We all grabbed a quick lunch before we doused the remains of the fire and started on our trek to find our way home. I just hoped that we would survive. I know that wasn't a very cheery thought, but something about this felt off. I couldn't put my finger on it. I guess having a friend you've known for years turn out to be a supernatural homicidal creature will do that. It was early afternoon when we finally set out. Unfortunately, we let Joel lead, hoping he could somehow get us unlost by remembering the way he had brought us here. Three hours later, the clueless look in his eye made us switch and give the reins to Trey. Okay, he said looking over the map, it looks like we're here. So we have at least a day's walk to get back to the trailhead. If I'm reading this map right, and I think I am. Joel then snorted, but we all ignored it. Should we take a bathroom break before we start again? Yeah, that's a good idea, Trey said, looking at each of us. Where's Jeannie? I whipped around and looked, but she wasn't there. Well, she was just with us 20 minutes ago. I ran back to the top of the hill we had just crested and looked all around. The hill gave me a good view of the way we'd just come, but I couldn't see her. Vainly, I hoped she had just fallen behind and paused to take a breather or she needed a bathroom break before the rest of us, but she wasn't there. The others came up behind me and looked as well but we all seemed to come to the same conclusion. Again, I asked. He's picking the weakest of the herd. Jeannie's not an animal, I growled. I know she's not. I'm just saying that's the way predators work. Well, what do we do now? If we stay here, we're exposed. He could see us for miles and we'd have a hard time knowing he was even coming. And Trey sighed deeply. I don't want us to just leave without making sure she didn't fall or something, 
Okay, Joel and I will go back the trail a little ways and we can see if we can find her. You two stay here, but keep a low profile. And he handed Marie her gun, just in case. Joel looked like he wanted to do literally anything other than go search for Jeannie, but he reluctantly removed his pack and then kissed Marie and followed after Trey. Marie and I tried to settle our nerves with a little small talk, but the sounds of the forest had us constantly whipping around, looking for noises, and hoping none of them were Soren coming to kill us. As we waited, we heard rustling in the woods. Whatever it was, it was big. Marie held out her gun at the ready, but I could see the barrel shaking. I can't say I blame her. My nerves were fried, too. We stayed as still as possible, hoping he didn't notice us and would just move on. But that wasn't the luck we had. Finally, the creature showed itself, and we both sighed with relief to find out that it was a bear. And then the realization hit us. Holy shit, it's a bear. Bears can kill people just as efficiently as Soren can. We focused on staying still as it lumbered to us and sniffed the air just a few feet away from us. It took another step closer, still sniffing, and Marie pulled the gun up and aimed it at it. Don't, I whispered. It'll just piss him off. She pointed the gun towards the sky and squeezed the trigger. The shot was deafening. My ears began ringing immediately and the bear didn't like it either. Fortunately, instead of swiping the gun out of Marie's hand, he turned and ran like he'd been shot in the backside. Marie turned to me with a look of triumph. Good job, I said sarcastically. What? She was holding her hand behind her ear now. I said never mind. Trey then came running up the trail at that moment. Are you okay, he said, looking at me more than Marie. Yeah, Annie Oakley here just scared off a bear by firing a gun like an inch from my ear. So I won't be hearing much for, oh, the rest of my life, but yeah, we're good. Did you find her? No, we didn't see any sign of her, Trey replied. Well, where's Joel at? Just then, Joel appeared on the trail, walking slowly, obviously winded. He saw us looking at him and waved as he paused and bent over to catch his breath. He's never heard of a gym either, Trey replied, nudging my shoulder. Suddenly, the creature then appeared behind Joel. It grabbed him and slashed its claws across his throat. Blood sprayed everywhere as the world went into slow motion, and I could hear Marie screaming. I saw Trey grab her to keep her from running to save Joel. I heard her fire off shot after shot, and one of the shots hit the creature. Two of them hit Joel. I'll never forget the look of hurt and betrayal in his eyes as he saw Marie holding the gun, just before his head slumped over. Marie then stopped shooting. Her eyes grew wide as she realized what she'd done. Her arms went limp at her sides and the gun fell to the ground. The rest of her wasn't far behind as she collapsed to the forest floor, sobbing. Trey and I stared at each other in shock. It all happened so quickly it seemed unreal. When we looked back where the creature and Joel had been, they were gone. The only thing left behind was a distraught Marie and Joel's blood sprayed all over the place. I bent down to Marie, but there were no words of consolation that I could think of. There was no comfort to give. This thing was hunting us, that was for sure now, and I had no doubt that the rest of us were going to be next. I couldn't believe that just two days ago we all came stomping through this same patch of forest, laughing and carrying on, having a great time. And now, half of our group was dead, and we were all that was left. I knew Soren wasn't dead. I'd just seen him rip Joel's throat out. I mean, he was dead to me, but he was alive. If I ever got the chance to end him, I would do it without hesitation. I started shaking uncontrollably and couldn't stop. Trey then reached over and pulled me into a hug. He held me until I stopped shaking. Then we both looked at Marie. She was laying on the ground, only half visible through the foliage, shaking as well. Marie, I said, not knowing what I would say next. And she didn't look at me. Her eyes were locked on the spot where we'd last seen Joel. I'm sure all she could see was his look of betrayal. As she lay there, I saw her blink for the first time since Joel had stepped out of the woods. Her eyes focused on something in front of her and I followed her gaze and saw the gun. Before I could react, she grabbed it immediately, pressed it to her head, and pulled the trigger. I couldn't believe it. I screamed as the gun clicked on a spent round. She squeezed the trigger over and over, but all it did was click like a toy. She threw it down in disgust, then got up and started walking toward where we'd seen Joel and Soren last. Where are you going? Trey said, starting after her. I'm going to find that thing and kill it, she said without breaking a stride. With what? My bare fucking hands. 
Trey then glanced back at me, and I knew we had no choice but to follow her, even if it meant we were doomed to share the same fate as our friends. Well, how are you going to find it? Marie didn't respond, but she just pointed at the ground. I looked, and there was a trail of blood. It was Joel's blood. As we followed her in a possessed state of vengeance, I justified risking my life for the knowledge that this thing would hunt us down anyway, even if we kept going the way we had been. It was only a matter of time. Maybe going on the offensive would give us a chance of surviving. That's what I told myself at least to keep me from running the other way, screaming in terror. After a short walk, I noticed the blood trail had diminished. It was farther between now and we had a struggle to find it. But it became a moot point when we stumbled across the cave. It was in a direct line with the last bit of blood we'd seen. It made sense for this thing to hide in a cave, not that it made me feel any more confident. We stopped about 50 yards shy from it and crouched down so we wouldn't be seen as easily. All right, now what? Trey asked. Marie looked around and then picked up a large branch that had fallen. She held it like a club and said, We're going to kill it. As Trey and I searched for similar weapons, Marie marched straight towards the cave, and we caught up with her as she entered. I was expecting it to be dark, but there was some light source further in that I couldn't see yet. Even still, I pulled out my flashlight and turned it on. The cave was nothing special, naturally rough formations of rock on the ceiling floor. It was large enough for us to stand comfortably, but Trey had to duck in a few places. We stalked our way inside quietly, each of us holding our impromptu clubs at the ready. The further we went, the lighter the cave became. We finally found out why when we came to a roaring fire. There were strips of meat strung across sticks leaning against each other over it, and we didn't have to wonder long where the meat had come from. In the corner past the fire was a large pile of bones that had been stripped of all the meat. I would love to say that the bones looked like they came from animals, but they didn't. There was a full human rib cage on display, as well as some femurs and other assorted bones. Some of them were broken as if the creature had tormented them before killing them. As if the pile of human bones wasn't enough of a horrible discovery, there were two bodies next to them as well. One was unmistakably Joel, but the other was so covered in blood and gore it was hard to identify. My first guess was it could only be Jeannie. Seeing our friends laying on a pile, dead, waiting to be eaten, changed something within me. I wasn't afraid anymore. I knew what this thing could do, but I felt the rage building inside me. I knew I would fight to my final breath to make sure this thing never hunted again. As we stood there, I heard a footstep behind us, and a half a second later, Trey disappeared in a flash of fur. The creature had snuck up behind us and caught Trey off guard. I watched in horror as it twisted his neck around until his face could see his back. His body collapsed on the ground with a heavy thump. I was staring at my friend in shock. He was our best hope of surviving this thing and now he was gone. Marie screamed like a banshee and charged at it, swinging her club and connecting with its face. The creature turned and looked at her like it hadn't even felt it, then backhanded her, sending her flying against the wall. I charged, holding my club high in hopes of smashing its head in. The creature grabbed my club in midair and lifted it up with me holding on. It shook me loose and I landed on the floor hard, knocking the wind out of me. It squeezed the club with one hand and shattered it. Then it came over to me and stuck its face right next to mine, and I could smell the stench of death coming from its mouth. It smiled, showing me its horribly sharp red teeth as I lay there helpless. Finish it, Soren, I said through ragged gasps of air. The thing made a sound that sounded almost like a bit of a laugh. It stood and glared down at me, still wearing that infuriating grin. And then it began to change. The fur became somehow less and more pink skin appeared. It shrank in size like the reverse of every werewolf movie I've ever seen, until a naked human stood there. It was Jeannie. My jaw hung open. Her grin hadn't changed. It was still as taunting as before. Jeannie, what the fuck? She snorted like she was still in the beast form. And you would have the audacity to ask me that, wouldn't you? Do you still not understand, she said. Our friends know your friends. I was always the odd one out, the last one called, the outcast, the laughing stock. Jeannie, we included you in everything. Oh, did you? Did you really? You didn't want to. I didn't want to have friends that cared about me instead of just using me as a tag along, an excuse. 
What happened to Soren, Jeannie? She then walked over to the mangled body covered in blood and kicked it. Uh, he saw me transform. I was just going to give you all a fright you'd never forget, but then once he saw me, I had to kill him. You killed him because he saw you? Yeah, you don't understand. How could you? This has been passed through generations in my family. It is always regarded as a secret honor of the highest level. No one can know about it. Those unlike us would stop at nothing to hunt us down and destroy us. She then smiled, but I knew it wasn't a good thing. She held her hands out and I could see the hair starting to grow on them, and I knew this was it. She was done talking, and I was about to die. Her face then turned from triumph to terror as a piece of broken bone poked out through the middle of her chest. She turned to find Soren shoving it through. He looked like a piece of meat animated and crushed. Her transformation then became unstable. Her hands grew to enormous size, then shrank back to normal. Her head became covered with hair, and then she went bald. She reached back, her bones sounded like they were breaking, and she pulled the bone out of her back. She whipped around and stabbed Soren in the neck with it. The transformation began again when Marie appeared and smashed her face with the club. Jeannie went down hard, smacking her face off the ground with a hollow thud. Marie grabbed the bone and stabbed her in the chest. She pulled the bone back out and stabbed her again and again. Jeannie screamed as she tried to transform, but Marie's hands were a blur. She stabbed her face, chest, groin, everywhere she could see. She used the sharp end of the bone to impale it. As a last hope for survival, Jeannie reached up and grabbed Marie's neck. She slowly turned it until it was beyond what the vertebrae could take. I heard the first pop and Marie's vicious attack came to a halt. After the second and third, her body went limp and fell over to the floor. Jeannie then looked over at me as I finally mustered the strength to stand. I picked up what was left of my club and dragged it over beside her, and I could see new patches of fur growing. I raised my club and brought it down on her face. Strength returned to me as I raised the club again, smashing it into her face again. Over and over, I bashed her face until there was nothing left but a bloody pulp. The hair on her body faded as her life ebbed away. I wanted to say something clever and pointed that would make her realize the heinous act of what she'd done, but I was too tired. My adrenaline then crashed and I fell to the floor, exhausted. I woke to darkness. The fire had burned down to a few glowing embers. I felt around and found my flashlight. I turned it on and stood looking around the cave. Nothing had changed. Everyone but me was still dead. Even Soren's last desperate act to save us had been at the cost of his own life. I shone my light on each body and silently eulogized them. The last one I came to was Jeannie. The only thing I could think of was why. Why not tell us? Why keep this thing that burned inside her a secret? I thought about it for a moment and realized I wouldn't have told anyone either. I slowly then made my way out of the cave and fortunately the sun had just came up. I stopped and stared at the wonders of nature. It didn't care that all my friends were dead. It didn't care if I lived or died. The sun would rise again tomorrow no matter what. I suddenly felt very small and insignificant. There was no celebrating. Survival had become a hollow victory. I followed the sun out of the forest to the trail that led to our cars. For the longest time, I sat in my car and thought, What do I tell the families of my dead friends? What could I even tell them? I knew from the very beginning that we should have never let Joel lead us down this fucking path. <laughs>